I'll be brave if you're brave. I'll be brave, but only if you're brave. And it could be just you and me. We'll be family. Just wait and see. So I will fight if you'll fight. Yeah, I will fight, but only if you'll fight. Oh, we can make it through this like sailors in a tempest. Like sailors in a tempest together. And it could be just you and me. We'll be family. Just wait and see. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Lung Cancer Living Room. We're so happy to have all of you here in the room, all of you signing in online from uh, around the world. We're so excited to be here tonight to talk about GoTo Foundation for Lung Cancer. Um, as many of you know by now, um, because we either called you or you received an email or because you saw the press release or because you're here tonight and hearing it for the first time, um, the Bonnie J. Adario Lung Cancer Foundation and the Lung Cancer Alliance have merged to become one. And that one is, there we go. Yeah, that deserves a, that deserves a clap. <laughs> Thanks, Jill. <laughs> Um, we, um, we couldn't be more thrilled um, to be coming together um, stronger as the GoTo Foundation for Lung Cancer. Um, and you're going to hear tonight um, all about how that came to be, why that came to be, where we want to go, how excited we are. Um, not only from our co-founders, Bonnie, as you know, um, Lori Fenton Ambrose, as some of you may, may or may not know um, yet, uh, you will get to know her, why they decided uh, that those, these two powerhouses were going to be better as one. Um, you're going to hear from Dr. David Jablons, who most of you, <clears throat> if you have not met, you've heard us talk about ad nauseum in these meetings. Um, thoracic surgeon extraordinaire from UCSF and Bonnie surgeon. Um, and then Francis, Francis Spruitt and Terry Ann um, Giulio. DeGiulio. DeGiulio, sorry. <laughs> um, both patients and survivors, um, both very familiar with both organizations. And they're going to talk a little bit about how uh, that interaction with each organization has impacted uh, their, their journey since their diagnosis. Um, and with that, um, I'm going to turn some of it over to the panel. You guys who have been here know that I can't sometimes help but um, interject <laughs> my opinion or a comment. And I'd like to encourage all of you to do the same, including the panel. So I might direct a, a question towards a certain person, but I really, really, if you guys have an opinion or, or something to say about something someone's saying, please, um, please feel free to interject. and. So, mom. Okay, mom. <laughs> uh, 15 years lung cancer survivor. Um, started the foundation long, long ago with my illustrious surgeon here. He named the foundation. Our legal name was a breath away from the cure. And he said, no, 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 Bonnie. It's got to be the Bonnie J. Adario Lung Cancer Foundation because it worked for Susan G. Komen. <laughs> so, and, and it did, and, and it did. <laughs> um, but I, I, I just saw a lot of barriers to care. I was, um, uh, you know, misdiagnosed like almost everybody in the room here for a very long time. And when I finally found a care team up at UCSF, headed up by Dr. Javelins, uh, I realized how lucky I was and how unlucky so many other people were that were not getting the kind of care that I received. So we decided that we just needed to start a foundation and make sure everybody got the, the, the care that, that they so deserved. And that was 15 years ago, and mm -hmm. here we are today, mm -hmm. merging with a, a, an amazing friend of mine. Lori and I have been friends for over a decade, 
when I go to the East Coast, I drop in and have a glass of wine with her when she comes out here. Two, we do three. the same. <laughs> <laughs> we get her. We get her an appointment to get her hair done. And um, but you know, almost every year we talked about how neat it would be if we merged. And you know, we would each individually come up with you know, not yet, not yet. And the last time we met over a year ago, we talked about you know. What do you think? Is it time? And we both said, yeah, it's time. It's time that we do it. There's so many good things happening for lung cancer. And I love, I lo I love what everybody is saying about double hope. It's also double trouble. For <laughs> anybody out there that doesn't think we are not going to make great change in lung cancer. So I, I couldn't have a better partner in crime. Thanks. I am so thrilled to be here and please know that I've watched the living room. I've actually participated in the living room back in a corner as a observer and now to have the honor and I feel the privilege to sit here as a panelist and to be talking about what we know will transform the future of lung cancer. Uh, Lung Cancer Alliance was actually formed in Washington State in 1995. And again, one of the grounding aspects of what we'll talk about tonight, I think, are the similarities of why our organizations began and what continues to motivate the organizations because Lung Cancer Alliance was also founded by survivors and patients specifically for the needs of survivors and patients. And uh, realizing after about 10 years of work that some of the real work needed to happen in advocacy in Washington moved the office to Washington, D.C. in 2004. And that's when I actually joined the organization and have been with it since that moment, uh, growing it, building it, continuing to do the supportive work, uh, but thinking about how we could really focus on the issues that affected the delivery of the care, uh, the breakthroughs that needed to happen with increased research funding, and then frankly, having a voice representing this disease that had not been there before. And to be at a place when we could talk about how our complementing organizations could come together it would have been shame on us not to do this because of what is occurring right now for our community and to actually expand the capacity, expand the reach, make sure screening gets to people who need it, making sure that there's the research to fund the science and the breakthroughs. That's what our coming together will really help accelerate. And if we didn't, we couldn't accelerate it fast enough on our own. Doing this together is going to double the capacity. So this is a very exciting moment that we've been talking about and knowing has been the right thing to do. Thanks, Lori. Yeah. Um, Dr. Jablons, you want to talk about who you are and why, why lung cancer matters to you? What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> so if you have a few hours. Careful. Anyway, yeah, we'll, we won't go there. But um, I know several of you, and, and I congratulate all of you on going through your individual voyages and having a community to support you, and Bonnie in particular, Lori. Uh, I think I'm the only board member that's been on both boards I know. at one point or another. <laughs> Not that I even went to half the board meetings, but uh, <laughs> nice let the record reflect I did get here almost on time. But, um, <laughs> you know, we're busy, as are everyone else. But uh, anyway, it's, it's a marathon, not a sprint, as you know. Um, it's, a, it's a dreaded disease, like any cancer, like any of these diseases, truthfully. But... Uh, it's been unfairly stigmatized and it's been unfairly ignored for so long, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and I think at the end of the day, what we all share is just an inability to tolerate injustice. Yes. Absolutely. Right? Exactly. And that's why we're all here today. Whether it's because you got a disease that came out of nowhere yeah. uh, for the people who, you know, were here to be able to tell the stories, a common theme is early detection and incidental finding, right? And for the people who aren't here to tell their stories, it's because that just, you know, trick of fate didn't happen or the baby aspirin you're on that's been proven not to help you anyway but did. 
allow a little capillary that fractured to let you cough up a little blood, and that's what found your early cancer or yours. I mean, there are a thousand different variations on a theme. Anyway, so, you know, I've been uh, in the trenches now for 30 years, mm -hmm. believe it or not, uh, specifically focused on lung cancer uh, in the laboratory, in the operating <coughs> rooms, in the clinics, with our residents, with our students, with our postdoctoral fellows. Tsai Changguo, Tsai Meikuo Meo Guanchi, whether we're training all the doctors in China, training all the doctors in America. But, the, you know, this is a match made in heaven a long time ago, and, you know, Stevie Wonder could have seen this, but it's, I'm just saying that it took forever to make it happen, but you had to, like everything, let things germinate yeah. and, and, you know, let the time come. And, you know, for all the industry representatives, you know, we can't do it alone. Right. Pharma is a critical partner in everything we do. And I do believe that some amazing things are around the corner. Mm -hmm. uh, now, we've been saying that for a long time, and the radius of that corner has been long. But we're beginning to deliver, right? I mean, immunotherapy took 40 years. Steve Rosenberg, all his trainees, you know, all my partners in the lab, Suzanne Topalian was my benchmate, you know, <clears throat> couldn't get good help, so I had to marry Drew Pardol, whatever. Eventually, they cloned PDL1. The rest was history. Sold that antibody to Bristol, not that long ago, and, uh, you know, and, and it gets commercialized, and then it, it, it comes with ripples to help people, right? Where's Francis. Uh, yeah, Francis, right. Um, <laughs> I was diagnosed in 2007, um, had um, a right upper lobectomy on uh, Christmas Eve that, that month, and then uh, 12 cycles of uh, chemotherapy in the spring of 2008. Um, after a year, year and a half, Roslyn and I, my wife Roslyn and I, we, we wanted to uh, give something back to the lung cancer community. And I ran into a lung cancer alliance table. And uh, the rest is pretty much history. I, I, we went uh, to DC to knock on doors to get uh, yeah. people upset. And, and, and we're asking for money and all kinds of other things. Um, I just, tonight I heard for the first time, I was referred to as a, uh, a hill rat. <laughs> so, uh, I, I, I like that, I like that uh, moniker, so I'm, I'm gonna go with that. That's That's great. Thing. Thing. Yeah. I, think the first, I think the first time I met you was actually in DC. I don't think we had met, yeah. or no, I'd met Roslyn at, a, at, a, at, a, yeah. uh, at the Jog for Jill in, yeah. in Berkeley. Um, but you and no, I we met, in met DC, until but, DC yeah. when, yeah. when we went at, out. At, this, at your at summit. For the summit. Yeah. 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 This is a few yeah. years yeah. now. Yeah. 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 It was very good. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Terry Ann. I'm Terry Ann DiGiulio, and I am a hill rat in training. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm a two time lung cancer survivor. I was first diagnosed 14 years ago. Uh, it was an incidental finding, and I had my lower right lobe removed. Um, the next year, um, I had a second surgery that thankfully was uh, benign, and I was followed throughout. Uh, two and a half years ago, I was diagnosed for a second time, and stereotactic radiation saved my right lung. So I am a face of early detection, as well as I personally seen the advances in treatments. I'm also a member of a multi-generational lung cancer family. There are five of us in my family. My mother lost her life eight years ago. Saturday was the anniversary, eighth anniversary. And her, two of her siblings have it, and I lost an uncle three months ago. Um, so during my second diagnosis <coughs> is when I decided if I'm lucky enough to be here, I have to do something about mm -hmm. it. And I found Nicole, who introduced me to uh, what I could do as an advocate. And she joined Bonnie J. Dario Foundation, and I fell in love with everyone here and all the good that you're doing. <laughs> and through the Adario Foundation, I found Lung Cancer Alliance. I want to share a brief story. I was at um, a walk for the Adario Foundation, and I was telling one of the doctors my story, and he said, do you know why breast cancer is so well funded? Because women went to Washington and they made some noise. And I said, I'll make some noise. Hey, David, do you know how I can do that? I don't even know how to do that. He said, let me introduce you to Elridge with the Lung Cancer Alliance. And through Elridge, I went and met at the offices of my senators and my representatives. 
and they made it so easy, and it, and it wasn't intimidating. And I feel like I'm making a difference, and we, we can make a difference. Mm -hmm. And these two organizations together, we don't have to choose, we have two amazing organizations to support as one now. Yeah. And we have a huge voice now. And I, I could, I'm emotional about our future. I'm emotional about what this can do for my beautiful 21-year-old niece that maybe we won't have a third generation affected mm -hmm. by this awful disease. And this is where I say over and over again at these meetings when early detection comes up, because I know most people in, well, everyone in the room and most people watching, this is sort of a moot point, right? You've, you've been diagnosed or your loved ones have been diagnosed, but it really creates an opportunity um, for you all to be the soldiers on the ground, you know, spreading the word about early detection, particularly for those you know um, are at risk and fall within the qualifying criteria, criteria for, for screening. And that's the, you know, eight, nine, 10 million people in the, just in the US um, that I'm talking about that are eligible right now because it will really help completely flip this disease on its, on its head if we can get um, um, that number up. David, I want to ask you a little bit um, your opinion about how some of the things that Lori and Bonnie have said about you know, how this is going to Im impact this powerhouse couple here is going to impact legislative change and, and funding and what that will mean for research. It, you know, there is no doubt that you guys, with our help and everyone's help, can move the needle. We just have to, you know, move the needle faster. We have to be smarter. You know, and it's not just a matter of having the money. You have to fund intelligent projects because you can waste a lot of money just been in an us. enormous amount of time um, chasing things that are not going to go anywhere. And then things that are disruptive just come out of the blue. But then they take time. But we've been investing a lot of time. 1971, do the math, whatever. It's been a long time since the war on cancer. It's not like for lack of spending some money, a drop in the bucket against what this disease is all about. But we have been building the blocks. I mean, you know, again, like we could talk for decades here, but I would just say, because, you know, we started Alchemy because we wanted to think, we said, this will be easy, quote unquote. You know, we'll just rattle the cage and change the stuff like Milken did and whatever. And so we brought all the, you know, thought leaders together and, you know, I roped in all my friends to come together. We said, okay, we're going to find all this money. Well, we didn't find all the money, but we found little money and that helped to get it started. And, you know, bit by bit, you have built some building blocks to now research and now mine, and those will pay dividends. But it's taken a decade, right? So it's very frustrating if you're the patient and we're all patients tragically at the end, there but for the grace of God, go us all. But, uh, you know, you need it immediately or need, you need it yesterday, but this science will triumph and humankind will triumph, but it takes so much time and effort yeah. and endless dedication. 24-7, you name it, and that's what it takes. But, but we're getting smarter, and things are happening faster, you know, so. So I, I want to kind of point to you two to talk about what are you most excited about? Where do you see us going? Um, what, do you, what, is, what does this look like? I don't know who wants to start. Lori, if you want to start. Bonnie. <clears throat> well, we're, you know, I, 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 I love what uh, was said at the beginning. Uh, you know, with the, the two of us together, we have an opportunity to do so much more. <clears throat> and our teams together, we have an even bigger opportunity to do so much more. We are better together already, and we've only been merged for, what, five days, yeah. six days? Yeah, Eight, um, something like that, yeah. But, but we, actually, we actually started working together last year. We had a, a 5K in, in October in Philadelphia, and we decided to bring all of our teams together. We did the 5K together, and we spent two days with everybody getting to know each other, you know, so we could get over those cultural differences mm -hmm. before we, you know, yeah. uh, really, really put this together. It was an amazing two days. And that's when I knew that this was gonna be, you know, a reality. Um, there's the two, the two foundations really fit together like a glove. You know, we've never been terribly involved or actually not involved at all in policy and LCA, they are the, 
the policymakers in Washington, D.C., which translate to the world, and it translates globally as well. Um, and they also do work on early detection as well. We do. We, you know, love the patient services. We, um, we do a lot of research, and that wasn't LCA's, you know, uh, modus MO. So together, we're just, we really are. We, we, before we sent the press release out last week, we called, you know, all of our partners, you know, when we were on phones and chatting <laughs> with people and telling them what was, what was coming down the road. And the word powerhouse kept coming up over and over and over again. And I really do believe this is going to be a lung cancer powerhouse and we are gonna make some great change together. I really do. Everything you know about the organizations remains the same and gets better. So that's the beauty of this. What you've come to know about our respective organizations and the work we do is not going to change. It will be enhanced. It'll be strengthened. We will have more capacity, more reach. Even how we have talked about some of the program work in our patient support services, how we work with hospitals and the researchers and the doctors in that multidisciplinary setting, how we are communicating national awareness messages, how we are building best practice care uh, for screening through that continuum of care and identifying places as centers of excellence that are delivering that. And then what happens on the research front with the research that has been driven in collaboration with Alchemy and then how our voices will be amplified before our federal policymakers who control those resources, who help shape healthcare delivery. All of that is going to continue, but now be strengthened. So the programs that you have come to know will be there and then be even better for this. And that is what the now almost 50 person organization with offices here in this Bay Area and in Washington, D.C., that is expanding access to care locally and serving as a resource globally, that's what this is. It is the hub for anything, whatever someone needs through their journey, we're the go-to in this one place with people who have cared from day one and have been motivated by nothing short of how we can help you. That doesn't change, that's only gonna grow. That's what makes this so exciting. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll be brave if you're brave I'll be brave but only if you're brave And it could be Just you and me We'll be family Just wait and see So I will fight if you'll fight Yeah, I will fight but only if you'll fight Oh, we can make it through this Like sailors in a tempest Like sailors in a tempest Together and it could be just you and me will be family just wait and see